Hey everybody, welcome to another Arkham Horror deck building video for new players. Today we're going to be looking at Leo Anderson, the expedition leader from the Forgotten Age. If this is your first time seeing one of those videos, uh, we build this deck with two copies of the core set and the entire cycle uh, from which Leo came. Uh, if you only have one copy of the four set, we recommend of the core set. Sorry, we recommend picking up a second copy or proxying the cards you don't have. It will make your deck more consistent and will help you win more. Uh, last but not least, I don't think it matters for any of these. Oh no, it does for a very important card. Uh, the, you might have heard of something called the taboo list. We recommend uh, in your first few plays of this game, you just ignore the taboo list and play with the cards as printed uh, without any changes, just because live it have it fun with them and then start worrying about those changes leo anderson he cares about allies so when your turn begins you can play an ally asset uh, reducing its cost by one and this doesn't cost an action and it makes them a little bit cheaper uh, and then uh, his star effect is plus two search the top three cards of your deck for an ally asset and draw it and shuffle your deck uh, he has four brains so he's pretty good at handling uh, he, i'm not pretty good he is he's just he's he can handle the Mythos deck very well. Uh, he has three books, so he could get clues if you want him to. Uh, you only a little bit of bump for that. Four Fist makes him standard at fighting, and then his one foot means that he can't do much, and he'll likely fall off a train if the time comes to it. Fantasy Flight, mobility <laughs> boosting Walker win. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, his deck building is a uh, uh, zero to five Guardian, zero to five Neutral, and zero to two Rogue. Uh, he has you special. Uh, his unique is Mitch Brown, who I always mix up his name with whatever uh, Ursula's is, Jake Williams or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he commits for two wilds, but he also, uh, when he's in play, you have two additional ally slots, which can only no, no, be used can, to hold non-unique allies. You can stop there. He commits for two wilds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sometimes gives you two extra slots for non-unique allies, which I wish was just printed on Leo's investigator card. Mm -hmm. That would be like, Man, like that's like two, six not, experience worth of stuff. Two, <laughs> not two. Like, just, just like you have an extra slot for, for non-unique allies, and then like, I don't even care, just give me an unexpected courage as my unique asset. <laughs> like, uh, I'm his that. personal weakness yeah, is maybe bought. Maybe if they flipped it. Never mind, never mind is bottom blood. You must either discard an ally asset you control or discard each ally asset from your hand. If no assets are discarded by this effect, shuffle it back into your deck. It kind of has like the Finn Edwards, uh, if this doesn't happen, just draw it again later, you idiot. Um, but this is very likely to happen with Leo Anderson because he likes allies and he's gonna have them in his hand or in play. Uh, so with Leo Anderson, you're gonna wanna be playing allies when you can, and luckily with this deck, we have ways to do that, as well as some recommendations when it comes to the upgrades. So let's start breaking these cards down. Travis, why don't you take these ones? Okay, well you have four punch and you need to play guardian cards, so you probably wanna, you're probably gonna be the one who shoot monsters, and you can't shoot with a gun. So... That's where the 45 automatic comes in. It lets you shoot monsters. It's a gun. It's a gun. Yeah. Uh, you're also going to the jungle as Leo Anderson. Uh, what expedition leader would be caught without his handy machete yep. to uh, cut his way through the vines and the undergrowth and the snakes? It's probably uh, <laughs> the one investigator, apart from uh, Ursula who can't play it, that this weapon makes sense with. Yeah, like, it'd be pretty... I mean, also, like, it's probably pretty difficult to shoot a snake. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. And it's a lot easier to just chop it. So Definitely. That's good. Uh, V-Cop is an ally. That gives you plus one fist, and that's good when you want fist and allies. And Guard Dog <laughs> is also another ally. Yep. Um, yeah. Neither of them are yet. Honest, yeah, to be honest, we're, like, a little bit limited on those in the <laughs> corset and Forgotten Age, but... I mean, the ones we have are good. So. Yeah, B-Cop and Guard Dog are both good, and they both kind of actually work... Uh, I don't want to say well with his ability, because discarding a Beat Cop so you can play your Guard Dog for two is not, like, the best exchange. But, like, like they just... Are... No, you fish. Yeah. Oh, they just naturally, like, they both, like, Guard Dog especially and, and B-Cop, they just naturally die by their design. So they'll eventually be gone if you don't have Mitch Brown in play. Yeah, I would go so far to say that, like, Venturer is good, but Beat Cop and Guard Dog are, like, great. Yeah. 
Like, Brand, let me take these ones. Oh, we got Leo DeLuca. It can just be a pair of Leos running through the jungle. Uh, <laughs> he's one of the one of the uh, most versatile allies in the game. He's expensive, but gives you an extra action. It's pretty good. And honestly, you actually hack the system as Leo Anderson because your level zero Leo DeLuca is essentially a level is mm -hmm. like the upgraded Leo DeLuca. Yep. Three experience bait. Also, like he say, Leo gets you two actions the turn you play him. Oh my god! Oh my god! You could play him and then just spend five actions. Essentially, you could just send all your actions getting resources, and then you made your money back. <laughs> like kinda, kinda. Yeah. yeah, we got emergency cash, which is a much better way to make deck. money. And uh, we need money. It's very important. Oh god, we need money. Yeah. Wow, we can expect the courage, which is great. We can throw it at like all kinds of skill tests. We can throw it at brain tests, we can throw it at punch tests. We can even throw it at an investigate test, because we've got three book. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh we can throw it at a foot test, but we still only get to test at three, so like unless unless we're facing a mythos test that is like how many points you fail by. Yeah. Probably not a great choice. Yeah. Still, no could be done. Normally at this point we would be doing like our guts speech, but yeah. uh, unexpected yeah. courage works very well for Leo's stat line. So also four yeah. brain baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also there's also uh, the take the initiative coming, which is yeah, very we are good we are well. pretty tanky. Yeah. Uh, also because if we take a bunch of damage, we can just have our dogs and shit die. Yeah. It's whatever. Uh, then there's vicious <laughs> blow, which lets you just attack for yeah. more. More damage. Yeah, you wanna you wanna shoot a guy? What if what if you shot him better? <clears throat> uh, survival knife is a very fun <laughs> cheeky weapon, where after an enemy attacks and deals damage to you during the enemy phase or your guard dog, uh, you get to uh, fight against the attacking enemy with Leo with no other things in play. He gets to attack at six and it deals plus one damage. So that's pretty uh, great for a two cost weapon for Leo. Uh, now we go to Decorated Skull, which is always a good time, because when you play an ally, you put the skull in front of their head and say, Charge the skull! Charge it! After an investigator, ally, asset, or enemy or location is defeated, you place one resource on Decorated Skull. As a charge, you can spend one charge to draw one card and gain one resource. So not only does this replace your cards, but also gains your, uh, gives you a resource, uh, and your allies are going to leave play, because, uh, if you don't have Mitch Brown in play, you're gonna need to keep cycling through your allies to make sure you're getting the juicy goodness of that skull. Uh, Venturer replaces uh, ammo uh, on an asset controlled by Investigate Your Location, so yeah. you can use it to refill your 20, uh, your 45 automatic, which will make it like that. That's a there's he's, some good uh, juice in there. And then when you're done my... with Venturer, you can just kill him and play something yeah. else. Yeah, he's one of my favorite flavor. <clears throat> character like allies in the game where you're like you brought him along to be your quartermaster and you're like i need more bullets i'm out of bullets and he's like you can have one bullets <laughs> and you're like can i have more than one bullet i'd like i need to shoot a thing and he's like no he's like, like three no, guys no, no. here man he's like no yeah. no 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 because well, he knows once it Make... gives you all three bullets yeah. you're yeah. he's dead so he's pacing it <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Just protecting his own interests. <laughs> uh, we got a you handle this one um, from the Forgotten Age. So uh, with Leo, this is like not as strong as it is with the rogues with one brain, but like you can still give cards that you don't want to other players and then gain that one resource, which is really good for playing the allies that you want to play due to your ability. Like yeah. foot tests. Like foot yeah, tests, yeah. Get to dodge every foot, well, not every foot, but like one of them. And then uh, foot tests are very <laughs> relevant in uh, Forgotten Age as well. So if you're playing with this, just this cycle, uh, you handle this one is going to get you away from a lot of snake bites, albeit you have a lot of allies who can die to a snake yeah. bite as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Travis, why don't you take these guys? Uh, mm -hmm. Scene of the crime, you can only play as your first action because it's bold and you discover a clue location but you get two clues if there's an enemy at your location and this action is not provoke attack swap opportunities there's going to be enemies at your location a lot that's what you do is you fight and kill enemies and yeah getting two yeah, clues you, that's a pretty good deal you show up and you're like check out this scene of the crime and the guy who's across the room from you is like what scene of the crime and you're loading your gun and you're like the one i'm about to commit <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't worry guys i know who did it it was me <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, we got a second win here because uh, you take damage. Sometimes you want to take the damage instead of your allies and because they're useful for other things. <laughs> and this second win helps shore that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We got two copies of Trusted. This makes your allies better and if you've been following along, you know that Leo likes his allies, so making them better is good. And lastly, we got one of my favorite cards, Take the Initiative. Um, commit only to a skill test you're performing, and it loses one uh, wild icon for each action taken by an investigator this phase, which is irrelevant when you commit it in the uh, Mythos phase, unless one of your scumbag teammates is drawn, like... That stars card from Dream Eaters, <laughs> the stars or are like yeah. commit yeah. quick thinking yeah. to a test or something. Whoops! Like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of screw you over on that one. But like three wild, it, as general, it's just like three wild. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you even if you throw it at a foot test, you might ever pass. Yeah, yeah this could be yeah. a guts as well if you prefer. But for the most part, I think, I think that the three wild is like a little bit better than the card draw. I agree. I agree. Especially in Leo, where you just don't have the money to play your cards. <laughs> uh, Brian, why don't you talk about the core set upgrades? <laughs> All right, so we got upgraded Beat Cop. The thing this guy does better than regular Beat Cop is he can take one more damage before he dies, and instead of discarding him to deal one damage, we get to exhaust him and deal the damage to both him and an enemy at our location. So we get to use him three times instead of one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to experience because he's learned how to use his gun to yeah. shoot monsters instead of just like running at them and hitting them with the gun. Or, or yeah. like he, he always would like shoot through his own head and then curve the bullet <laughs> to hit the monster. And now he's like, if I just don't shoot through my own head first, I'll do more damage. <laughs> Never expect me to run up and shoot the bullet through my chest in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Upgraded Leo just costs, costs one less resource, so we can play him at the beginning of our turn for four, which is actually like probably one of the best deals you're ever going to make. Yeah. Uh, and Cat Bug... Uh, he uh, gives us plus one foot, which gives us a 100% increase, actually. <laughs> um, Pretty high value. But <laughs> the real thing this guy does is we can exhaust him to disengage from every enemy at our location and move to a different location. Uh, so we can just not fight something. Because otherwise yeah, we're, ne we're never getting away. Honestly, like... Yeah, it's particularly relevant for the Forgotten Age, where there's like sometimes vengeance enemies yeah. you don't want to kill. Yeah. Yeah, because our, our only way to get away from enemies is just, like, through them. I so. do think yeah, like, for other campaigns, he's pretty low on the list. But but I do think Catbug is, like, one of, like, if he was in any other color, like, because just green's foot's so high, but he's a very strong card. Like Yeah, he's pretty oh, solid. Is, for sure. Yeah. Uh, he's also non-unique. He is. He, there's so many Catbugs out yeah, there. Yeah, there's so many. All right, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna do something that's never been done in one of these videos. We're gonna talk about the Dunwich Legacy. Uh, the only reason we're doing that is because this has that cycle has the uh, permanent card Charisma, which gives you one additional ally slot. Uh, it's really good with Leo because you want to have allies in play without needing to find Mitch Brown. Or, for example, you could play Leo, Mitch Brown, and then like beat cops, guard dogs, venturers, and uh, cat bugs for days. Uh, yeah. Charisma is also a super easy card to proxy. Bryn did it once in one of our playthroughs by just writing Charisma on a piece of paper and putting it in a sleeve. You don't even need to really put it in a sleeve. Just remember that you bought Charisma. Sure. Uh, you don't even have to have a piece of paper. Yeah, you just just remember it. Like anything. Just This I think yeah, yeah. is a must buy for Leo Anderson. It's one of the easiest cards to proxy, so like you should do it. The only downside of proxying it is you don't see beautiful Charlie Kane every time you get ready for a game, but... That's yeah. still good. This, this card is like being able to upgrade your unique asset into something that actually fucking works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll take these ones, I suppose. Treasure Hunter. So this guy plays for zero, and then you can uh, pay for him once or just discard him after. So you essentially get like the value out of him, and then if you want to pay the one, you it's like it's totally okay, or you can just let him go. Yeah. Gives you plus one book, so if you're trying to be more clue getting as well, uh, it's it's a great way to do that. He also soaks for a good t a chunk of damage yeah. for his two cost two is as pretty well. real. Yeah, yeah, like uh, this guy, like putting him into play for free, and then like have him stick around. So like putting him in play for free and then paying the one resource to keep him around for a turn is like playing him normally. Yeah, and then like. You can probably keep him around for like two, maybe three turns before his 
cost starts to outweigh what he offers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I pretty much just like the deck where you play these guys and you have the decorated skull, and every time you run one to play, you're just like holding them against the skull, and you're like, look. Yeah, feed the skull. <laughs> yeah. This is your fate. Um, this is why you're here. <laughs> Reliable is really sweet. You can put it on uh, your survival knife to attack at uh, plus three. You put it on your automatic to pl- attack uh, even more. It's just, uh, it's a great, fun little upgrade to make your weapons. Uh, one of my favorite decks I've done, the only Leo Anderson was Leo Anderson with the knuckle dusters and just making them reliable. It was a really fun time. Well prepared is an awesome asset that I think all of us at the table love. It works especially well for Leo because you're going to have a lot of assets in play that you can use to then bump up the skill value for your tests. Yeah, he uh, also looks like he could use a shave. Yeah, oh yeah, he definitely needs one. Uh, kerosene, uh, I actually don't know what this one does. If someone else can take oh, this card. Uh, Kero- <laughs> kerosene, I know what this one does because Travis hates this one. It's uh, bad. Yeah, it costs three. It gives you three supplies as an action. If an, en- if an enemy was defeated, I think it has to be at the location that you're in. You can exhaust the kerosene and spend one of its supplies to heal two horror from among investigators and allies at your location. Yeah, you don't have uh, to defeat it like yourself, but if the yeah, enemy has been defeated at that there. location this round, so mm-hmm. like you could also uh, move to a different location where enemy was defeated and use it. Use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, luckily, as Leo, you're probably going to be killing the enemies, so. Yeah, like this card, yeah. it's not just bad. Like it only costs one experience, and especially if you have limited options, like it, it's a fine card. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it does. It's like nice if you pair up with like Agnes or something, someone you can actually benefit or who has low horror. Yeah. Leo, yeah. like yeah, six. You're not doing super great. Mm-hmm. But you have your allies yeah. to make it so that horror is not really a big deal. Some of them, guard dog doesn't have. Who wants to talk about flamethrower? Uh, everybody. This card is like, so good if you're having is. a shave. Oh, yeah. It's, wait, you don't even need to be taking a shave for it to be good. No, no, but, like, it's really good, then. You just put on the backpack and, like, pretend you're playing Call of Duty Black Ops campaign mode. Dude. Like, you just go start torching down enemies. All of them at once, actually. It gives, yeah. you, like, yeah. it gives you, like, plus four punch or something ridiculous. Yeah, yep. plus four punch. Yeah, like you thought your machete was efficient for bur- for chopping way through the Amazon, like you just, just burn it down. I like just burn it down. Yeah, I like the four cost, four ammo, four fist, four damage. I understand why it doesn't cost four experience, but yeah. <laughs> I wish there was four as a it bound. Could, it could cost four and be exceptional. It could. Honestly, that would be <laughs> For what the card does, like the card's very strong. It it, it burns things like no flamethrower before it ever did. Yeah. yeah. No, like this is like the the a good weapon. <laughs> so so for reference, if you don't know what this card does, you just get to attack at plus four, uh, and uh, Eight. yeah, the enemy must be engaged with you with the highest fight. So you attack the enemy with the highest fight. Um. And then if you're successful, you just deal four damage among all enemies engaged with you. Uh, and then any additional damage adds to this total. So that means just make a plus uh, an eight cost attack to deal four damage, four times not including the extra ammo that Venturer might be able to put in there. So Yeah, yeah Venturer's like, oh, I didn't just bring bullets. Yeah. <laughs> this might even be one that, like, if you're doing this, I think extra ammunition's in the core set. Like, if you really want to go mm-hmm. on Flamethrower, that could be one that could yeah. help you get the most flame for your for your fun. Yeah, time for your throw. Anyway, yeah, that's... I think, uh, I think this one also has custom ammunition. Ooh, I think that's maybe. from this one. Because we were joking about how you could play it in Father Mateo, and it was the only off-color blessed card. <laughs> Probably. I don't think that yeah. there's, like, a ton of monsters in... Uh... No. No, there aren't, but it does give you two extra ammo. And it's fast. I guess. But just think, with the flamethrower and, like, upwards of eight attacks from it, you can actually burn the Harbinger to death. Yeah. Eight attacks over multiple scenarios, mind you. Incredible. Um, anyway, that's Leo. Um, he is a bit... Uh, he's tough without... with just the core set in his cycle. 
Um, but his stat I line is great. actually. I think this deck's like pretty solid, actually. Mm -hmm. No, I do too. I do. I do too. But I think just until you get like your charisma, you're not going to see like the full value of it. Um, oh yeah. But he he, his charisma. stats are really good. Like his four three four. Like those are good stats for. for yeah, that. pretty much anyone who has one of the stats, except like arguably brain, is usually having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, green cards. <laughs> um, yeah, that's Leo. Next week, we're going to be talking about Jim Culver. Then we got Lola Hayes, Colorful. And then we're done until the Innsmouth Conspiracy cycle finishes. But worry not, we will have a new uh, series taking this spot when we are through that. But in the meantime, it's also thanks, deck building related. It is also deck building, specifically targeting new players as well for that, too. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.